What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I'm going to be reviewing a Chromebook from last year that is the Asus C436. And I wanted to review this because I think a lot of people have misconceptions about this device. Some people said this only has 220 nits of brightness. Other people said, oh, the keyboard deck has so much give, it's so terrible. So a lot of people really strayed away from this device. But in 2021, I'm expecting a lot of sales on this Chromebook. In fact, I got this Chromebook myself for $640 on a one day sale. I'm expecting this Chromebook to creep around that $600 range a lot more often. And that's when we have to ask ourselves, is it worth buying in 2021? And should you consider spending your hard earned money on this device? I'm going to let you know right now. Let's get straight into this review. So this device right here is the Asus C436 and I've got to tell you this has one of the most premium designs I've felt out of any Chromebook and one reason is because of the weight. This weighs about two and a half pounds. It is super super lightweight. It has a very nice build made of magnesium alloy. It basically feels like aluminum but it feels lighter than aluminum and when you look at this device you're going to see a lot of premium things. Now you're going to see a USB-C, a head phone jack. You're going to see the power button up and down on the volume. Well, that seems pretty normal, but it does have side firing speakers, which is great because a lot of speakers get muffled when you put them on the bottom. You see on this side as well, another side firing speaker. You see USB-C and you see a SD card slot. And when you look at the back here, you are going to notice your vents. You're going to notice vents right here as well. So you're going to see a very, very premium build, which is absolutely great. And when you open it up, you're also going to see not only some vents here, but you're going to see speakers as well. So you see speakers in multiple places on this device and that is absolutely great to see. Now one of those misconceptions I'm hearing is about the build. Now yes, you need to know there is a little bit of give on the keyboard deck, but I think it's really been exaggerated. A lot of people feel like this is going to feel like cheap plastic or something. So if you press down really, really hard, there's a small amount of give, but I've got to tell you, I barely notice any give on the keyboard deck. Now I'm pressing with one or two fingers here and I don't notice really much of anything and I feel like I'm pressing pretty hard. Now of course if you put your hand on and you really press it hard I'm sure you're gonna see a little bit of give but this is a premium premium build on this laptop. In fact this is one of the reasons why you should consider it in 2021. And another misconception on this device was that this screen is only 220 nits. That is absolutely not true. Now maybe someone got a dud out there maybe some other people did I don't know but I could safely say that multiple reviewers confirmed that this has over 280 nits of brightness. Also, I can clearly see with my own eyes. I just used a device with 250 nits and this is much, much brighter than that. Asus also confirmed with me separately through a Best Buy question that this was over 280 nits. So this device does get plenty bright enough. Now, I wouldn't say it's great brightness because there are a lot of premium Chromebooks out there that do have about 400 nits of brightness. So this has almost 300 nits. So I would say it's good brightness, but not great brightness but on the other end this has a great screen because it's also very premium as far as the colors and the quality of it so if you were to compare this to something like the HP Chromebook 360 you're gonna notice a much more premium screen on this device the colors are very accurate everything looks absolutely crisp it looks really good in fact it reminded me a lot of the QLED screen on the Galaxy Chromebook 2 because everything just looked very color accurate but this is where we have to think about a lot of these things okay Okay. because this has a good screen not a great screen because it doesn't have that high brightness it has a great phenomenal build and the performance I would also say is good and not great now I would not recommend spending $800 on this Chromebook in 2021 because there are a lot of other Chromebooks out there that are gonna have very very good builds and they're also gonna have newer processors that are much faster but again I am expecting sales on this device I am expecting some sales to go on so when you see this drop in price if and when you see this around $600 or $650 then the conversation is quickly going to change so if you see a Chromebook for example like the Acer Spin 713 that device yes it's going to have a faster processor but 
it's not going to have the build quality that you're going to see in this device. Even when you see newer Chromebooks like the newer version of the HP Chromebook 360 or you see newer Chromebooks like the Asus C536. Again, a lot of those devices are out there and they're great, but they don't have the build quality like this does. And they're also not as lightweight. So this device, it's not going to have a screen that's going to be quite as good as some Chromebooks out there. It's going to be great, but maybe not seven or $800 great. And this won't have a processor that's really going to match these newer Chromebooks either because it's not going to perform as good as the $800 Chromebooks or the $700 Chromebooks that are going to be coming out in 2021. Those are going to have 11th gen processors and those processors have big performance gains over last year. This has a 10th generation i3 processor in my model. They also have i5 and i7 versions for this. This also has 8 gigabytes of RAM. So it's going to perform good. This is a good performing Chromebook. In fact, everything that I did, it was very, very buttery smooth. I was able to edit video in Kden Live on Linux, and that worked pretty good overall. So this has good performance, but it won't be quite as good as those newer Chromebooks that are coming out. So that's what I'm talking about. This has good performance. And by the way, the battery life on this it is good, but it's certainly not great. I would say I got about six hours of battery life on this. It is not because of Intel processors, by the way. It's just because they have a small battery in here. It's like a 43 watt hour battery. A lot of Chromebooks out there have 50 to 60 watt hour batteries. So you could do the math for yourself and see that there is a little bit of a difference here. If another Chromebook would get eight or nine hours, this might get six hours, I would say. So six hours was pretty normal for me. You may get a little less or a little more depending depending on your usage. So that's one of the negatives of this Chromebook that is pretty clear. And another thing I want to mention is the keyboard. The keyboard is great, by the way. It feels great whenever I'm using it. It gets great travel on the keys, so I really liked that. It was one of the better typing experiences that I had. But the one thing that is true is the backlighting issue. So when you have silver keys like this and you have a silver gray look here, that's going to be a little bit of an issue, right? So when it was dark, everything looked great. I could see all the keys crystal clear, but I couldn't always see that whenever it was a bright day. So you can just hold that alt button and lower the brightness by pressing the lower brightness button and it will turn off your backlight if you turn it all the way down. And you could always turn it on at night. But the keyboard travel overall was good. It was a little bit mushy. Some of you may notice what I'm talking about there, but I personally like that. It was a quiet keyboard. It felt good and I did feel like it had enough travel. So when we summarize all this and think about it. This has great amazing build quality and it is super lightweight and I don't know any Chromebooks that are 14 inches that are this lightweight and portable and feel this good. Now I understand there are some 13 inch devices that are like that like the Galaxy Chromebook but that has a lot of issues like four hours of battery life right so I wouldn't really recommend that device. So this has a great build it has good performance, it has a good screen, an okay battery life, maybe good battery life, but it's average, I would say. So when you consider all of that, and when you consider the fact that I expect this Chromebook to be on sale frequently between six and $700, should you buy it? As always, it does depend. If you care about build quality more than performance, this is definitely a device to consider. There are a lot of Chromebooks out there that just don't have good build quality. They just don't feel good in the hand. They don't feel good to use. They're not super lightweight like this device. And a lot of those Chromebooks, well, they really have good performance overall. You're gonna see a lot of devices like that. The HP Chromebook 360, for example, sure that has good performance, that has great performance, and it actually has decent build quality. But on the other end, it is very heavy, and you're also gonna notice only 250 nits of brightness on the screen. You could also see that in the device I just reviewed, the Asus C536. That device is great in a lot of ways. It performs so well, but the build quality is very poor because the touchpad, it was making all these weird clicking noises when I was using it, and it's made of cheap plastic on the bottom. It felt very cheap whenever I was using it, so I would not recommend that. So when you're considering all of this and you're saying, I want a device with great build quality and good performance is enough for me, I would say this device will work phenomenally for you. And if you're used to Chromebooks, you have to understand that unless you're using Linux and using all this crazy stuff, an i3 10th generation processor 
is going to smoke through everything you want to do. It's going to be lightning fast. You're not going to have to worry about anything lagging or having hiccups. So why do you care if there's 11th generation processor gains in a device that is mainly meant for using the web or other things? At that point, you might want to focus more on build quality, which is why this is such a great device to consider, mainly if it goes on sale between six and seven hundred dollars. But on the other hand, you may want those processing performance gains. And I mainly think of those people who use crazy stuff on Linux. I like to use Kden Live and I would benefit from a performance bump going to an i3 processor of the 11th generation. You're also gonna see those XE graphics which are gonna make graphics performance a lot better on those other Chromebooks. But you're not gonna notice the XE graphics unless you're doing a lot of things again like video editing in Linux. So for most of you, I would say this is a really good device if you want a thin and lightweight device. But you should not buy this device if you want excellent, amazing battery life because this has average battery life. You should not buy this device if the keyboard backlighting bothers you with the fact that the lighting is very similar to the light of the keys. But this device is for people who want that premium build quality, but they want it in a cheaper device. So when you see this on sale and you see it between six and $700, it is definitely worth it if you want great build quality and good performance and a good screen for a good price. Hopefully this review has helped you. Hopefully I cleared up some misconceptions that are out there about this device. This device is very, very premium. It looks good. It looks absolutely great. And it's been a joy to use in my experience. Feel free to give me a like on this video. Give me a sub, which really helps me out as I try to slowly climb to 10,000 subs. And also follow me on Twitter because my Twitter followers, well, the quality of my followers sort of really stink. And that's because I did a lot of giveaways and stuff like that. And I need Twitter followers who are actually liking my stuff, who actually care about tech news and all that stuff, right? So if you care about tech news and tech deals, follow me on there. Thanks so much again for all of your support. Have a great day and enjoy your week.